How many centuries before we learn how to build cities like this again? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 reasons to re-watch Game of Thrones. For this list, we'll be looking at the reasons for revisiting the world of Westeros. You've had the chance to recover from that final season, now it's time to remember why you were so invested in the first place. If you're new to the Seven Kingdoms, come back when you're caught up. This is your spoiler warning. Which Game of Thrones moments are you most excited to rewatch? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. For the World Building Based on the A Song of Ice and Fire series by George R. R. Martin, the world of Game of Thrones is rich and detailed. House Rain was a powerful family, very wealthy, the second wealthiest in Westeros. The distinct countries and kingdoms each have their own cultures, languages, religions, traditions, and politics. The families have their own complex histories. A Lannister always pays his debt. No. A common saying, but not their official motto. By now, you'll know your Starks from your Lannisters, the old gods of the forest from the Faith of the Seven, and Westeros from Essos. And if you don't, you'll definitely do a rewatch. What's west of Westeros? I don't know. Martin has created a world you can become fully immersed in. And on top of all that, there's dragons. Dracarys. <laughs> Number 9. For the plots and characters you forgot about As a Game of Thrones newbie, it can be a struggle to keep up with the many plot strands and character names. Never forget what you are. The rest of the world will not. The beauty of returning, with hindsight, is that you can now get a firmer grasp on all of the intricacies. Who was John Arryn and who killed him? She says John Arryn was murdered. By the Lannisters. Why was Tywin at Harrenhal anyway? Who fought on what side in all of these wars they keep referencing? He came running at me, this dumb, high-born lad, thinking he could end the rebellion with a single swing of his sword. Being able to put names to faces is also surprisingly satisfying. This time you know who lives and who dies. You know when those big scenes are coming and you can appreciate the little details and the early moments you forgot all about. Number 8 for the battles. Game of Thrones is a show that loves long, dialogue-heavy scenes, full of details about the characters and the politics of the world. Because of this, the big set pieces feel earned, and they always have a massive emotional impact. There are people we care about on both sides, and the show is never afraid to kill off our favourites, so the stakes are always high. So long as I am your king, treason shall never go unpunished. Sir Illyn, bring me his head. In the early seasons, battles were talked about rather than seen, but moments like Tyrion's speech at Blackwater still packed a punch. This is your city Stannis means to sack. That's your gate he's ramming. If he gets in, it will be your houses he burns. Your gold he steals. As the budget increased, so did the spectacle. And by the time you get to the Battle of the Bastards, you're experiencing something really special. Number 7. For the costumes For fantasy shows, costume design is important, as good costuming helps us believe in the world and the characters. Game of Thrones won multiple awards for its costume designer, Michelle Clapton, and it's not hard to see why. Each beautifully detailed outfit tells a story, or reveals something about the person wearing it. In the case of major players like Cersei, Daenerys, or Sansa, a change in look marks a new chapter for their character. Even the very minor characters have their own journey. Look out for a maid of Cersei's whose style changes to mirror her mistress. Number 6. For the characters What was the real reason that Game of Thrones became such a big hit? Was it the politics, the sex, the dragons, or just that we cared about these characters so much? You love your children. It's your one redeeming quality, that in your cheekbones. Despite living in a fantasy world, they feel like real people. The good guys sometimes do terrible things, and even the villains are allowed their moments of humanity. What did my mother say exactly? Did she have urgent business with me? She did not say, Your Grace. The family relationships are dysfunctional, endearing, and heartbreaking by turns. There are unexpected friendships, doomed romances, a lot of darkness, but also plenty of warmth and humour. Or do you like girls who swoon, Jon Snow? <gasps> oh, 
a spider! Save me, Jon Snow! We've all got our favourites, and it's worth a rewatch just to spend time with them again, however things turned out for them in the end. I'll teach you. I'll come when Bert's on duty and no, teach you. No, no, it's easy. No, no. It'll be fun. Go. We can't. Why not? What will they do? Lock us in cells. Number five, for the payoffs. You suggested one-on-one -on -one combat, didn't you? There's a definite satisfaction in binging a show that once made us wait weeks and years for the answers we craved. <coughs> Did we always get the results we wanted? No. The ending was a case in point. But when plans work out, mysteries are solved or justice is served, it's a thing to behold. When people ask you what happened here, tell them the North remembers. It's not nice to wish death on someone, even if that someone is fictional, but revenge is sweet, and Game of Thrones crosses names off lists with style. I loved you more than anyone. And yet you betrayed me. Callbacks to earlier seasons are all the sweeter on a second watch, and spotting the early clues to later events adds an extra layer of enjoyment. Number four, to get emotional all over again. For a show that's been dismissed as nothing but tits and dragons, it's amazing how emotional it all was. Lord of Light, show us the Mother! way! Mother, please! Emmy-winning performances, heartbreaking dialogue, and storylines that took us through hell and back all played their part. We invested in the characters and they went through a lot, so when families were reunited, hearts were broken or hopes were dashed, we felt those emotions right along with them. I wish I was the monster you think I am. I wish I had enough poison for the whole pack of you. Any show with such a huge cultural impact will bring nostalgia with it, and it's worth it just to remember that feeling of watching for the first time. But there's also a reason that this show got us in the feels. My real father lost his head at King's Landing. I made a choice. And I chose wrong. Number three, because the ending isn't as bad as you remember. The outcry of disappointment over season eight was too loud to be ignored, but was it really as terrible as you remember? Mm, maybe. But there was so much anticipation and so few episodes in which to wrap up so many storylines that it was never going to satisfy everyone. It was necessary. Necessary? Have you been down there? No one wanted Bran on the Iron Throne, but it kind of makes sense. Daenerys' final turn was definitely not what we wanted, but Game of Thrones was never about happy endings, and it was signposted. I will answer injustice with justice. Whatever you thought of that penultimate episode, it was also, dare we say it, gripping TV. We all like to scream at the screen once in a while, and there were some gems amid the wreckage of that final season. <laughs> Number two, for the water cooler moments. By the final season, Game of Thrones was a show everyone was talking about, and not just fantasy fans. Hey, did you see Game of Thrones last night? From the moment Sean Bean's Ned Stark got his head chopped off, we knew this was a series prepared to take risks. By the time we reached the Red Wedding, the big water cooler moments were earning front page headlines. Oberyn Martell's combat with the mountain, the army of the dead at Hardhome, they just kept coming. If they get through, everyone dies! We watched the big deaths, long-awaited battles, and shocking twists and turns with bated breath, and couldn't wait to discuss the details the next day. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, because the prequels are coming. Winter is coming. Game of Thrones might be over, but HBO isn't finished with the world that George R. R. Martin created. A number of spin-off series have been in discussion, and the first prequel, The House of the Dragon, is coming to our screens in 2022. Starring Paddy Considine, Emma Darcy, Olivia Cooke, Matt Smith, and Rhys Evans, the series is based on Martin's book about Targaryen history, Fire and Blood. It will be set 200 years before the events in A Game of Thrones, during a turbulent period that culminated in The Dance of the Dragons. 
a civil war between Aegon II and his sister Rhaenyra. Sound confusing? I thought we'd lost you. Almost. Might be time to rewatch the original series and refresh your knowledge of Targaryen history. I want what I came for. I want the crown he promised me. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.